Explosions in VFX Graph. In case you haven't guessed, let's dive right in. We'll start by creating a VFX shader graph, which we're going to need to manage our texture, which is this explosion texture, which you can find in the Unity Particle Pack or link down in the description below for your convenience. And as usual, we'll name it something useful and open it up. We can then add a sample texture to the node, which will well sample the provided texture and we'll add our explosion texture in there for now. We'll then drag a line out from the RGBA channel and add a multiply node. We'll hook the other side of the multiply node up to a color node. This will let us blend a color with our sample texture. We need to change the mode to HDR so that we can apply an emission intensity. And we'll select an orangey color Then drag the output of the multiply node to our base color. Then we'll add a flipbook node so that we can sort this animation out. We'll drag its output to the UV of the sample texture 2D node. We'll set the width and height to 6x6 for the scenario and then we'll add a time node which we can actually use to animate this bitch. We will need to add a multiply node between the time node and the tile node of the flipbook so that we can control the speed of the animation. For now we'll set the speed to 36 and nice. We'll also need to drag a line from the alpha of the sample texture 2D to the alpha output of the shader. The well-disciplined version of me went and added properties for each of these things that we hard-coded just now and added them to our graph so that we could edit them from the visual effect graph that we created in a bit. Cool, cool, cool. So with all of that wired up, we can head down and create a visual effect graph. We will name it a name and then open it up. Sorry for the turbulence, but the next thing we're going to want to do is drag in our shader graph into our visual effect graph. And if nothing happens, make sure you actually save your shader graph. Now my variable names are all screwed up, so excuse me whilst I fix those real quick. Hmm, much better. Straight off the bat you should see stuff happening. It's not very impressive, but it's happening. Anyway, let's add an age over lifetime node so that we have time relative to our visual effect graph and we'll just plug that into the time input of our shader graph. We'll set the size over lifetime to a curve that looks a little like this so that our particles grow over time and we'll set the color over lifetime from a flat white to a transparent white over time. With that, things are looking pretty good already. Just the emission shape seems a bit off right now. Let's fix that real quick. We'll head up to the spawn system and we'll delete the default one. And then let's add a spawn burst with a single burst. In the initialized particle, we'll set the capacity to one to match and we'll delete the random velocity and random lifetime nodes. With those gone, we'll add a set lifetime node and we'll leave the lifetime at one. I mean, cool, but that's more of a pew and less of a boom. So let's head back to the size over lifetime and just modify the curve to look a bit like this instead. Looks pretty cool. But to really bring it to life, let's add some embers. To do this, we'll start by creating a new spawn context. We'll also add a single burst. Oh, and we can rename these things for clarity. And now that clarity is happy, we can increase the count to 100. We'll add an initialized particle node and set its capacity to 100 as well. We can hook that up to an update particle node and from there to an output particle quad. We'll set the main texture to the default knob texture, add a face camera orientation, a set size over lifetime attribute with a really small curve. This will make it so that our embers are really small and then approach a point of basically disappearing. Next, we'll add a set color over lifetime node. We'll set the color to a really bright orange with a lot of intensity and over time, it will approach a more alpha transparent color. Like in our initialize, we'll set a random lifetime between the numbers one and three seconds so that some of our particles die off quicker than others and they last at a maximum three seconds. We'll add a set position attribute with a sphere shape We'll add a conform to sphere force, which will keep our particles in the shape of a sphere as force pushes them out. And then we'll add a turbulence node, which will create a bunch of noise for our particles as they try to expand towards the edge of the sphere. Now you can see the effect in the little preview on the right. And this part is really just about tweaking these values. I found that setting a really small radius in our shape in the set position node and reducing the attraction speed and stick distance and stick force to zero and increasing the turbulence quite a bit gives us a nice result. I've made this whole project open source, so feel free to download it and fiddle with this effect and pop me any questions. I'll probably end up ignoring them or maybe not. Anyway, I'll catch you guys on the next one.